Humankind has long dreamed of venturing into space, but it wasn't until 1961 when the first crewed rocket was finally able to throw off the shackles of gravity and cross the threshold. It was a watershed moment, the birth of a new epoch, the Space Age. But all this wouldn't have been possible without the rocket launch. To achieve these staggering feats, you need a staggering amount of power. The good news is you don't need billions of dollars and a team of scientists behind you to have your own rocket launch. In 2004, civilian space exploration team became the first amateurs to launch a rocket into space. This isn't them. <laughs> Rockets are powered by combustion, a process that requires oxygen. And as there's no oxygen in space, any rocket leaving the atmosphere will need to take its own supply as well as fuel. But what other science does liftoff rely on? When the fuel burns, it creates a large volume of hot gas, which needs to be released at a controlled rate. This hot gas is funneled out of a nozzle, creating an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law, thrusting the rocket upwards. And once that rocket takes off, it's vital that it keeps pointing straight. Being long and thin, if it starts to rotate, it'll suddenly have a lot more air resistance, which could make it head into unpredictable directions. So, let the countdown begin, and let's see how our amateur rocketeers are getting on. OK, these guys look like they know what they're doing. That is a serious bit of kit. Three, two, one. Lovely launch, terrible direction, and I think you might have just accidentally declared war on Canada. The launch starts well. The fuel burns, creating a hot gas, which is pushed out of the back. But it starts to veer off course. Something else goes wrong. And suddenly, all that power doesn't seem quite so much fun anymore. Let's be more cautious and have a look at a smaller rocket. Watching off a rocket that um, they have when she was a kid. Sounds like an important heirloom. You better be careful with it. Oh, man! Oh, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps I can help. Your antique rocket looks like it's mostly made of cardboard, and as it ignited, the housing couldn't contain the rapidly expanding hot gases. Holy smoke! Well, that is another word for it, yes, I suppose. Our atmosphere is the blanket of gases that are held to the Earth by its gravitational attraction. And like a giant blanket, our atmosphere maintains the Earth's temperature. But unlike a blanket, it also provides the air we breathe. That's really where the blanket metaphor starts to break down. Maybe the simplest way to look at what our atmosphere does is to do experiments somewhere that doesn't technically have an atmosphere. Like the Moon. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. For our falcon, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? That proved Galileo was right, and that due to gravity, two objects will fall at the same rate, regardless of weight. But that doesn't work here on Earth. The hammer falls faster, and that is because of air resistance. The shape of the feather means it suffers a lot more from air resistance. It may not seem like it, but compared to the vacuum of space, our atmosphere is very dense. Think of this match as space debris, and the strike plate as our atmosphere's air resistance. The sudden increase in friction means much of the falling object's kinetic energy is converted into heat. Which is one of the reasons why most things that enter our atmosphere burn up before hitting the ground. <laughs> our young friend isn't wrong, but what is a shooting star? It's any natural or man-made object burning up as it enters the atmosphere, as air resistance causes frictional heating. 
Look at it. It's coming apart right now. Yep, you see the trail. NASA estimates that at least one piece of man-made space junk falls to Earth every day, but most of them burn up before they get through the upper atmosphere. This is an old rocket body. But if you still want to wish on it, be my guest. We've a lot to thank our atmosphere for. Parachuting, for example, is only possible because of our planet's dense atmosphere. Oh, look at that. Which provides the air resistance needed for a slow descent. So you couldn't do this in space. And even here on Earth, it's quite tricky. Of course, parachutes also need... ...steering. Want another example? <laughs> well, I would have thought that was obvious. He's demonstrating how friction causes heating. Are you serious? OK, it's not a perfect analogy, but if you imagine the road as our atmosphere and the remains of his wheel as something plummeting to Earth, then it sort of works. Bro! 